Welcome back, Catch from Scratch, episode 10. Topic today is going to be importing STLs. This is a pretty big deal because once we can import an external model into our program, we can do so many things in the future. We can calculate the volume, surface area, the weight, the centroid, we can calculate anything. We can create a mesh, we can convert the file type, we can do so many things. We can view it in our viewer. So many options. So this is going to be pretty big once we can finish it. So um, we have to edit five files today, the main function for our test case, and then both the output and the geometry um, sets of files. So I, I, I have spent a lot of time so far on STLs. I don't want to go over it in too much detail, but there are two different kinds of STLs, um, ASCII STLs and uh, binary STLs. And the difference between the two, obviously, is that binary STLs are, you know, binaries and ASCII ones are in ASCII. So you can actually read the ASCII one, you can't really read the binary one um, as easily. And to tell the difference, you know, just look at the first five bytes. If the first five bytes are letters S-O-L-I-D, it's an ASCII. If they're not, it's a binary. The first 80 bytes are garbage in uh, binary SDLs, so you can just determine that. I will warn you though, is that a lot of, um, in, in our binary SDLs, we fill this with zeros. Um, but most programs that you'll ever work with, like Blender or you know SolidWorks or whatever, they put a bunch of junk in their header. Like they put the version of the the program that created the SDL. So it, it's just a bunch of baloney they put in here. So you can't just check for zeros. You have to actually check if it's solid. And if it's solid, it's NASCII. Else, it's a binary. And I'll get into the actual algorithm later. Um, I have played around with this for a little bit, so. So let's create that function down here. It's uh, again struct body read STL. What was it? It's a, it's a car star file type file name. And so the first thing we should do, obviously, is just define that um, that body that we're going to eventually return. So struct body equals um, malloc. And we're going to malloc the size of the structure. All righty. That's good so far. Now, we didn't do this before. We probably should have, though. Whenever you define a structure like that, you should always set the parameters at the fields inside to you know, something. Um, if you don't, you may have so much junk in there, it may not um, be what you want it to be. And I had that problem earlier today when I was trying to play around for this video. So we'll set these um, sort of first pointers of the node list and face list to null. That should help us. And then also I notice that, you know, the algorithm I want to implement here, it it's made, made more efficient if we can define um, the last face we're working on. Because if we can do that, we can... Um, kind of save our place and not have to iterate through the entire list of faces every time we want to create a new face. Because sometimes you have, you know, you know, hundreds of thousands of faces, if not more, and um, you having to go through that over and over again for no reason is a waste of time. So we'll define a, a, a pointer for this last face and we'll, you know, we'll populate that later. Now to actually check if, um, well, let me talk about the algorithm first. So the algorithm is going to be check if, you know, binary or ASCII, and then based off which is which, I mean, you have to do this twice, different ways for each, you know, type, but we're going to loop through the triangles, and then for each triangle, we're going to uh, loop through vertices, and then for each vertice, you're going to see, um, check if vertex exists, I should say node, node exists, vertex coordinates, if yes, point to it, if no, create and point to it. Now honestly that's it. The actual semantics of, of, of implementing this is not so easy, but um, we'll figure that out right now. So to check if it's a binary or uh, an ASCII, again we just check the first five bytes, so we'll create a character array, and we'll call it file type buffer size five, and we're going to read in the first five um, 
Oh, I didn't open the file yet, did I? Let's open the file. So that's the, you create a file pointer, uh, F. And uh, what do you do? You do F open, uh, file name. Is it this, I think, file name? And uh, we have to pass in how you want to open it. We'll read it as a binary. That works for both ASCII and binary. So we'll just do that. Now into this uh, buffer, we will uh, read. So we'll say f read into the address of the file type buffer. Five bytes, one value from f. And now we'll check. You know, if if those match up with the word solid, we're now we're in ASCII. So let's check. So if mem compare, and we pass in the two different options. So one is file type buffer, the other is the word solid. And we're checking five bytes. If that evaluates to, well, obviously it's gonna evaluate to zero if they're the same. So not that, it's going to be one. So this will be binary, or sorry, ASCII. And I'll code that up myself later. That's a little bit more verbose. For the actual um, video, I'm just gonna code up the, the, the the binary, so we're gonna say else. And this is the uh, binary. So once we're in the binary, a couple things. So go back to the standard here. We just read the first five bytes for the letters S-O-L-I-D. There's still 75 bytes of the header that we don't care about. So we have to seek ahead. To seek ahead, it's not that hard. You just type in fseek. We pass in the uh, the file, how many bytes do you want to skip ahead, and then from where, and you can pass in uh, seek curve to get the current you know location of where you are in the file. So we're going to jump ahead 75 more bytes. And at that point, the next thing in the um, in a file in the STL is the number of triangles. It's a four byte value. So we're going to simply read that. So f read into the address number triangles. Four bytes, one value from F. And so that will load us into num triangles, but we should at this point, I, th I think, spend some time, because you know, you may have a model with hundreds of thousands or millions of faces, so it may take a few seconds to, to load this, and you should, should give some indicator to the user that you're loading a, a huge file. So I'm gonna print F um, something, just loading model, I don't know. And we'll, we'll probably keep track of this, you know, in a couple, maybe, maybe in some way in, in the future. But just, just to show that you're loading the model. So now we're going to do what we said here. We're going to loop through the triangles. So for int i equals zero, i less than num triangles, i plus plus. You know what, I'm gonna actually code it up right now. I'm gonna code up a way to keep track of the, the actual model. So I'll be right back in a, in a second. So what I did was I just did this like kind of not new line carriage return. So now whenever we go through, you know, 1% of the number of triangles in the model with this sort of modulo here, um, I'm gonna update this, this text loading file name model with i out of num triangles faces, and then I'm gonna flush standard out. Because whenever you don't have a new line, you have to flush it to actually get it to render to the screen. So that's fine. So once we, you know, once we are looping through the number of triangles, um, I, I here I just defined a face. So this is a face with, with three vertices. Um, sorry, actually there's num points here. I copied this from the geom.c. So this should say three. And at this point, um, I'm gonna set the face num nodes to three, just so we don't have any weird numbers in there. Or sorry, to zero, and we'll, we'll increment it to three, I guess. And uh, at this point, we can literally just say uh, f read um, into the face normal, four bytes, three values from f. So we're literally just gonna load straight away the, um, the normal value which is a normal vector, which is you know 12 bytes, so three times, uh, 
you know, float, which is, which is four. That's a normal vector. And we're gonna load that right away into the, the normal guy, the normal, uh, you know, field of that structure. So that's, that's good right away. And now we can look over the nodes. So we'll say four int j equals zero, j less than three, j plus plus. And now we're looping through the actual nodes. And here's where the logic comes in to check if the node's been, um, you know, created before. So, um, I guess first things first, we'll just pull in the, 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 the coordinate from the, the STL file. So we'll say float chords size three. And we will uh, f read into there. So f read into chords, the same uh, four three as before from, from file f. And uh, and now we have to actually look through the um, look through the nodes in the model to see if we have got a node at these coordinates yet. And if yes, we're just going to point to it. If not, we have to create a new one. So. I'm gonna code this up and I'll be right back in a second. Okay, I coded up this logic here. Basically the way it works is um, we create an, an iterator starting at the first node in the body, which by the way should be null at the beginning. And then I have another value here just to keep track of what was the previous one. Um, oh, so by the way, I, I included a couple more files, uh, a couple more headers at least. So I got center lib, string, bool, and a C type. We'll need that for later. So, back to this, so if we found a match, that's this Boolean. So basically the way it works is while, we loop, while we're iterating through the, the nodes in the body that have already been defined, you know, they're not null, we check. If, is the X coordinate equal to the core that we just, you know, pulled out of the STL file? If they all match, X, Y, and Z, I say match found is one and I break out of this loop. If not, we're iterating through. Now, if the match is found, we're going to, like I said before, we're going to point to that, you know, node that iter to the jth index of the node array and increment the number of nodes in the face. So, once you find it, you store that in the node array of that face. Um, else, so if it's not found, you have to create it. So here we're creating a node. We're making the node with, you know, those coordinates. We're going to say null for the next node, but we're going to populate the next, the, the previous next node, the previous nodes next with this node, with this logic here. So we're saying, you know, if, if it's the first node in the body, you know, that's fine. Else, the previous nodes, next node is this node, <laughs> if that makes sense. And then again, we're storing that in the face, a node array, and incrementing the number of nodes in the face. So that should work if I did it right. And then next, um, we will have to do something with the faces. So uh, if you recall, we've just populated the, the node array in the face. We have to actually put the face in the face, you know, uh, linked list. So we'll say uh, if the body face equals null, and if, it, if this is the first face, what we do is we set um, body face equal to face, and then we set the last face equal to this face. So we keep track of where we are. Now, if this is not the first face, which is usually the case, <laughs> unless you have a bunch of one face models that you wanna run, um, we have a different logic here. So we'll say body, I guess we'll say uh, last face, next equals current equals the current face, so face. And then um, last face equals face. So we'll keep we'll keep this, this current face as last face, if that, if that makes sense. This is all getting very confusing. And then now, now that we've um, gone through that, I wanna go back to the sort of uh, standard here. If you look at the bottom, there's actually two bytes of garbage at the end of every triangle. So we have to jump ahead um, two bytes. So f seek, f2, seek current. And honestly, that should be pretty much it. We have, we have f, we can f close now, f. And um, what else should we do? We have, uh, we should probably print something. Print F, which, what should we print? Um, I guess we'll, we'll replace what we what we just had. So we had like this running constantly. Yeah, so we'll repeat that. We'll say um, print F loaded 
to model this many faces, this many nodes. Yeah, that's good. And then we'll put a new line finally. So we'll pass in what, that's his file name. And then we can actually use our old function. So count faces, body. It's a good way to error check as well. And count nodes body. So it, it, if the number of triangles is the match of count faces, we'll know something is wrong. So that's, that's good. And at that point, we can just return the body, and we're done. What's all this? Why so many? So that should be it for this, um, this binary one. I'm going to put up the ASCII one, and I'll be back in a few minutes. OK, here it is. It's pretty much the same exact logic as the other one. Except instead of f read, we're using f gets, and we're putting that into this very long character array here. And um, I have this function from before, trim leading white space, which just gets rid of all the tabs and stuff. Oh, by the way, I just realized we messed up um, here where it says end loop. We also better have an end face. Yeah, end face it. All right, let me check. Yeah, and I, I messed that up. We didn't have that apparently in our um, in our right STL ASCII. We missed that. For some reason, it didn't matter. Um, but yeah, that was a mistake. We should definitely have an end face it. Anyway, um, so yeah, this ASCII thing is done. You can check on the on the repository. Basically, I'm using um, scanf with these parameters here to pull in values instead of using fread. Okay, so. Um, yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Everything else is pretty much the same. Um, except for the way we leave. We leave with this. I'm checking, um, you know, if we ever get to a, a face normal, if we're ever looking for face normal instead of we get end of file, that basically means just, okay, yeah, we're done. So print out, we loaded the model. So that should be it um, for this. Yeah, we got a binary and we got ASCII. Let me get rid of all these comments. I hate comments. Minimal comments all day, every day. Let's close out of this. I put in the trim leading white space to our declaration here. Let's get rid of that. Now, um, let's go into our main file. So let's let's get rid of all this. Yeah, let's get rid of all this. Let's keep this part here, prism. So what? let me show you what I did. So um, I got this hot air balloon.stl for us to check if this works. So let's just um, let's check on that. So file one equals hot air balloon.stl. And then we're going to just uh, we're gonna say a struct body star balloon equals read STL. I guess we passed in the address, right? I think we passed in the address, uh, file one. And you know what? To check that both of these work, that both read operations work, let's actually write it out. So let's say, um, so what I want to do is I want to check that both the binary and the ASCII versions of our function work. So to do that, I'm going to use our function from, from yesterday, which is to, to output a file. So I'm going to say file two equals higher balloon two dot STL. And we're going to say um, write STL ASCII. And we're going to pass in the, the body and the address of the file, so file 2. So now, we basically, we'll have opened hot air balloon. We'll have parsed it with our function. We'll now be writing as an output, as an ASCII STL, that file. At that point, we're going to read it again, <laughs> struct body. So now we have two read operations just to see if they both work. Balloon two equals read STL and file two. So this is gonna be our second read operation. So if either of these failed, it's gonna break. So this is super high stakes. Um, now we're gonna use this look at stuff. We're gonna actually render the, the, the everything.
what is it? This is called uh, draw body. We're passing in, I don't know. I think this is a pretty large, um, large model. So we'll have to pass in some large values for wh where we're looking, looking at, looking from. And we're passing in the body, balloon two. So when we look at, look from how we define. So look at, it's gonna be a float size three. Let's, let's, I have an idea actually, hold on. That's, that's gonna be a size three and then look from, that's also gonna be a size three. Let's just say 500 and then let's take the values of look at one and two. And for one and two, or actually one, two, or zero, one, and two for look at, I actually wanna make a new function. So let's say, I don't know, get body nodal centroid. I wanna get like the, the the center of all the nodes in the body. So I'm gonna pass in these, uh, I guess, I have to define this. So let me go to our john.h. It's gonna be a void. Get body node centroid. Um, it's gonna be a struct body star body. And then a uh, float, I don't know, like this output or something. Doesn't matter. I guess we'll call it centroid. It's not a real centroid, it's kind of a fake centroid. Let's uh, copy this, let's close the file. Down to the end of the file. Now in this function, we have to just compute this. It's pretty simple to compute. Let's say uh, struct node star node equals body node. We're just gonna iterate through the um, nodes in the body. Oops. Could call that iter, I guess, but I couldn't care less. Um, let's, let's calculate the number of uh, nodes. We have a function for that. But it turns it into, let's do float, because I want to do float division in a second. So um, cast as a float, the count nodes in the body. Now we can loop through the nodes while the node does not equal null. And now once, once we loop through the nodes, we can actually add to centroid. So we'll say centroid zero equals, or else we'll do plus equals node x divided by num. Now you might be saying, well, what's the point of um, computing this number out of the loop? We could just compute it in the loop and we could avoid this, you know, divide every every uh, iteration of this loop. Well, the reason is I, is I don't know how many faces there are gonna be in this model and I don't wanna overflow. So if we can just keep track of each, you know, independent nodes, if, you know, a contribution to the centroid value, you know, one by one, that would be a little bit better. So anyway, uh, node equals node next, and then return. Okay, what else do you have to do here? So this will populate this look at function. Uh, let's look at you know um, vector based off of the nodal centroid. So we'll have look at. What else do we need? Anything? Or are we good? Maybe we could print it out first just to get an idea of where, what we're dealing with. So I'll say printf nodal centroid percent f percent f percent f. So we'll put that in a parentheses. We'll pass in a look at zero. Look at one, look at two. And this should work. Wow, that's extremely lucky. It's probably not gonna work though. Hey! Well, I did, I did kind of practice this beforehand, so. Anyway, look at this, we got a 
hot air balloon right here, rendered. So we first we did we, we loaded um, this many faces and nodes in our regular balloon STL. Then we wrote that as our own STL. We loaded that. So we loaded both a binary and an ASCII STL, calculated the centroid, and then rendered it to the screen. That's pretty impressive if you ask me. Until next time, thanks for watching.